Hi, this video is about input validation. We're not going to learn anything new in this uh, video, but we're going to be using a lot of concepts that we've learned previously. One of those concepts we're going to be using is a loop, and the input validation loop is shown in figure 7.1. And this is what we need to understand and want to be able to reproduce. Um, so I'm going to talk about the concept of input validation, and then we'll see an example in Raptor and in Python. But as you can see here, we want to know if the input is valid. If it is, we keep going. If it's not, display an error message and get the input again. So let's uh, start simply, as I'd like to do, and just make a program that gets some input. Um, almost every program gets input. You just have to think about what type of input um, is acceptable and what type of input could the user provide that could cause problems. Um, this example program, I will just make something simple uh, where we get the number of days worked in a week. This could be a program that um, calculates a paycheck for somebody or something. So you're used to just doing uh, an input, an assignment perhaps, and then an output. So I'll do that and then we're going to try to see how we can mess this program up. That's one of my favorite things about input validation is that we start to make our programs uh, more robust, a little bit more bulletproof. And I like trying to think of how, how I could break a program and how I could prevent a user from breaking my programs. So let's get a simple thing made here where we just say the person earns $10 per day that they worked and we could say we worked four days in a week and you'd say that somebody could earn $40 and that's fine and that's what you were doing up until this point. But what if they say, oh, I get $10 for whatever times whatever number I put in here. Let me say I worked 100 hours and let this program write me a check for $1,000. Right? Obviously, as a business owner, you would not want that. 100 is not valid input logically. Furthermore, a user might put in the word 10. You know, that is not valid input. And that actually causes this program to crash. And that is what we really want to avoid. We want to avoid the program crashing. And we want to avoid producing bad output, garbage. The term is garbage in, garbage out. We want to prevent garbage in our programs. So you might logically think, oh, well, we just want to need to make sure that the day is less than eight. So we could say, if the input is less than eight, it's good, all right? If it's not less than eight, then we want to give the user a chance to input again. All right, so I could do that. I put in 100 and it didn't work. I put in five and it did work. Okay, so that might seem like it's fine with an if statement. The problem is you don't know how many times the user is going to enter bad input. So if I can get around that validation just by putting in bad input twice. So an if statement is not going to work for us in this situation. We need to repeatedly ask for good input. We don't know how many times we're going to have to ask for the good input. So hopefully that triggers in your brain that we're going to want to use a loop. And it's going to be a condition controlled loop, not a count controlled loop. That's the only kind we can make in Raptor, so that's an easy decision. All right, and you can refer back to figure 7.1 to see how to make this. The condition is going to be the same days less than eight? If the answer to that question is no, we want to keep asking them the question. Right? 55 is not less than eight, so we repeat. I, even if I enter 55 again, I'm stuck in this loop until the user enters a number that's less than eight, and then it does work just fine. All right, so let's think of some other ways that we could break this program. What else could go wrong? Um, also, we need to give the user some better information. We want the user to know why it's asking them that same question over and over again. Nothing is more frustrating as a user, I'm sure you've experienced it, where it keeps telling you to do something and you don't know why it's telling you to do that. 
Right? You might not, the user might not have read days in this week, so it might be it might be a innocent error. And so give them the benefit of the doubt, and just like it shows in the figure, display an error message either in an output symbol or incorporate it into your input symbol to tell them what's going on. All right, now another way that you could have bad input here is if we entered a negative number. Uh, days less than eight is not going to catch that. Negative five is less than eight. So according to this, that would be fine. All right, we need to also make sure that it's greater than zero. So just like the example in the loop symbol, we're going to put a logical operator and. And remember, with logical operators, you need a complete expression on both sides of the logical operator. So we want to make sure days is less than eight and days is greater than zero. If the answer to both of those questions is yes, then we will proceed. If the answer to either of those questions is no, we go into the loop and keep on repeating. And if you try to exit your loop, sometimes your program crashes. So I'm going to have to restart Raptor because I want to view some of my Raptor uh, with my Python, just to keep things simple. Right? I would like to work smarter, not harder. So let's copy and paste a little bit and see how this is going to work in Python because uh, Python is going to be a little bit different just because of our options for loops. So remember, you can't right click and paste, but you can go to edit, paste, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to get my input here days gets. Uh, number of days worked, um, number do pay days times 10. Copying and pasting that doesn't really help me that much because it's a short line of code. This one's pretty short too, but I'll go ahead and copy it anyway. And I'll do my calculation. Pay gets days times 10. And there I'm pasting the output symbol. I'm going to grab the double quote so I don't need that and we remember we need to convert to a string a number if you're using the plus symbol in Python so that's one little change we'll save this and see if it runs and that's not the expected output if you look closely we're actually assigning to the variable days that entire string the way this is written so then the variable pay got that string 10 times. That's not what we want. We want that to be our input prompt. So I need the keyword input. And I put that in parentheses. Okay. Again, I'm just starting simply. I'm not doing any input validation just to get something that works and build from there. It's a lot easier to do that than to try to build a whole robust application to begin with. All right. So as you can see, I put in bad input. I put in garbage and I get out garbage. So we want to use a loop. And since this is going to be a condition controlled loop, we don't know how many times the user is going to put in bad input. We want to use a while loop. Remember our other option is a for loop. That's only good when you know how many times the loop is going to have to repeat. So what we had in our other program was while days was less than eight. Oh, that was our condition in, in Raptor. Is that going to work in Python? Let's think about how loops work in Python. How does this condition work? If this condition evaluates to true, we're going to go into the loop. Right, that's different than Python or Raptor, where if the answer to the question was no, you went into the loop. In Python, if the answer is no, you don't go into the loop. So we need to reverse our logic here. We need to think a little bit differently. What question could we ask? So if the answer was yes, we repeat it. is days greater than seven. That's what we want to avoid. We don't want days greater than seven to be considered valid input. And don't forget your colon. The debugger or the IDE will help you with that. Now it continues to work with valid input. That's good. Let's make sure it works with invalid input. And sure enough, it gives us another opportunity to input. And it will do that as many times as we give it bad input. Now, it would be a um, better, um, better user interface to give the user some information about why they're being prompted again. Right? That, 
goes back to that uh, figure 7 1. And let's also take another step forward. Uh, the last thing we did in, in Raptor was to make sure it was between 0 and 7. So, how are we going to write that in Python? We need to reverse our logic. We use an AND in Raptor, we're going to use an OR in Python. If either of these are true, then we're going to repeat the loop. You don't have to worry about um, some of the other things that could go wrong in Python, like the text input. Let's just do some basic input validation to make sure you understand the concept.